Today on our 2008 Ram 2500, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Airlift Load Lifter 7500 XL Air Helper Spring. These are for the rear axle. Part number is AL57595. Now here's what your airbags are going to look like installed. As you can see, we've got a double convoluted design. So unlike the old pancake style airbags, these don't take up a whole lot of room even when they're compressed. So for the tighter spaces and things like that, not going to have any issues to worry about. The brackets are going to be custom for this application. They're designed so we can just bolt them on. Don't have to do any kind of modifications, any drilling or anything like that really in this area to get everything in place. Now these are designed to support up to 7,500 pounds. That doesn't mean we're going to increase the safe load handling capability of the truck 7,500 pounds. Just means we stay with whatever the manufacturer's weight recommendation is, but this is going to help to take up to 7,500 pounds of force off of our rear suspension system and absorb it in that airbag. Now, as a side effect of airbags being installed in your vehicle, you're gonna have increased ride quality. They maintain and help to soften and smooth out any of those larger bumps and things like that. Also, because these are individual to one another, if we have an off-center load, maybe there's more weight on the driver's side than there is on the passenger side, we can inflate these individually to help get everything leveled back out. Now, if you're looking for an airbag setup, you probably have a situation something like this. Whether you've got a lot of pin weight from a fifth wheel, you carry heavy loads in the back of the trailer, or you just have a lot of tongue weight off a utility trailer or something like that that you haul, it's causing rear vehicle sag. When this rear suspension sags, we're putting a lot of excess pressure on the rear end. The springs are going to build up more friction and more heat, and eventually over time, they just lose their strength and durability. Also, a second byproduct of pushing the rear end of the truck down is that the front end, unfortunately, it starts to come up. When that comes up, we don't have the same pressure on our front tires. They're not holding the road as well. So braking and steering performance are both going to be a little bit less than what they were when our truck's riding at its natural ride height. But we also change that suspension geometry in the front, which switches your alignment. And when your alignment angles are changed or when your suspension geometry changed, your alignment angles change, and that can cause uneven tire wear on the front. Also, as the front of the truck tips up, our headlights are aiming higher and higher. So in a natural situation, we should be able to see the road very clearly right in front of us. But once we have that load on, those headlights are going to start tipping up. Makes it harder for us to see where we're headed. Now we're going to be using the same load in our truck before and after. We're going to get some measurements now with the truck squatting. And once we put our airbags on, we'll see what we need to get our truck back level. Now once we pull the load out of the back of the truck, we can find our factory measurement. That's where we want to get back to, or at least it's, it's normal ride height. So here we've got 36 and a quarter. Now we're at about 39 in the front. Let's get our airbags installed. We'll get that load back in there. We'll level everything out and see how these measurements change. Let's let, add a little air in those bags to bring that on up and get it level. We'll check our back measurement, our front measurement, and make sure everything's matching up. All right, we're right back at our 36 here in the rear of the vehicle, and that took 40 PSI of pressure to raise us up. It really raised it up without a lot of PSI. We still have 60 PSI to go up. So you can imagine the load handling capabilities that these are going to help really take a lot of stress and strain off that rear suspension. Let's go up there and check the front, make sure that that front's come back down where we want it. All right, it looks like we're back down to about 39 and 1 8. So we're still just a touch high. You could try adding a little more air to the back, maybe just a touch to try to bring this down a little bit more. It's really putting a lot more pressure back on these front tires. We're gonna get our steering back, we're gonna get our braking back, and we're also gonna return that steering geometry where it needs to be to save our tires. And of course, like we've talked about, that headlight angle is gonna come back down. It's gonna let us see where we're going a lot easier. Now we're going to take a look at some end-use footage. This is going to be with 12, 1,300 pounds loaded in the back of the truck. You'll notice as we're taking our corners, we're going to experience a lot of body roll side to side. 
you can see how the axle in relation to the frame gets narrower, wider, narrower, and wider. Now let's take a look going over our bumps. You can see how much movement we have up and down. It really is felt inside of the vehicle. You can feel each and every bump, every little pothole here in the parking lot. Once we have our airbags installed, you notice as we're going side to side now, we don't have near as much movement. It really helps eliminate that shifting load side to side, giving us body roll. The steering feels better. You can feel that it, it's planted to the road more firmly. And then when we get to the bumps, it feels much smoother inside of the vehicle. You don't have quite the pitching side to side or the abrupt movements. It seems like the airbags are really helping to soften everything out. And to begin our installation, we need to remove the existing factory jounce bumpers. There are two bolts that hold it in place. We've got one here on the back side and one up here, kind of the same location, just on the front side. And for those, we're going to use a 15 millimeter socket. All right, now we'll just set these aside. We'll do the same thing over on our passenger side as well. Now we're going to bring our upper portion of the upper bracket into position and the two holes here line up with the two holes we just took those bolts out of for the jounce bumpers. We want this notch out portion to be towards the inside of the frame rail. Now for most of this work you're going to need this rear axle hanging. So you'll want to use jack stands or some other safe way to support the rear of the vehicle and allow this to hang down. It's going to give you the room you need to work. Now we're going to be using the longer of the button head screws. They're going to have a hex head to them. These also have a little bit coarser threads. There's a few shorter ones with finer threads. Those are for the airbag. So be sure you get the right one so you don't mess up the threads here. Then with the six millimeter hex bit, we'll get these snug down. And we're going to get those torqued down to the specifications in our instructions. Now let's do that same thing for the passenger side. Now we're ready to get the assembly of our airbag completed. We want to start with one of our roll pans. We want the rounded edge to be facing downward. We're facing toward the airbag on the bottom. We'll put it facing upward. See we're able to line up our air inflation hole and our two mounting holes. While that's exposed, we're going to take our air fitting. This is the 90 degree elbow. We need this to go in finger tight. Then from there, we're going to go a turn and a half. All right. Now that's going to swivel, so the position of that isn't necessarily important, just that so we have our thread sealant down inside the thread so we don't have any leaks. Now we'll bring the lower portion of our upper bracket in. We want the beveled portion of the holes to be facing up. That's going to give our bolts a spot to seat. So we'll line up the roll plate and our upper bracket with the holes. We're going to be using the flat top screws. Now we can snug these up. That's going to keep our roll plate and everything in position like we want. Now we'll torque these down to the specifications and our instructions. Now we're going to flip this over. You might let it overhang slightly so you don't worry about damaging your air fitting there. And another roll plate that's going to go in place. Remember, we're reversing this one now. We want the rounded edges towards the airbag. Then we've got our lower bracket to mount. And we're going to be using the two oblong holes. They're right here. The, the key is having these tabs facing away from our air fitting. So our air fitting's on this side on the bottom. So we're going to install the tabs to the other side. Now we also have a square hole on each side of this plate. We need to take our carriage bolts and place those down through before we attach our bracket here. We've got our fine thread button head screws there. We're going to get those threaded in. You're going to need to lift up a little bit on this bracket so that those bolts can fit into the slots. Once we have one started, we'll get the other one started. We can just slide our bracket over. Both of those started, we'll start snugging them down. 
then again, we're going to torque them down to the specifications in our instructions. Now we're going to take our pre-assembled airbag here, bring this down and in. Now, since we're working on a little bit older style truck, we want to make sure that this carriage bolt goes in between the brake line and the axle. It's going to go right through this gap. Just like that. And a carriage bolt coming down on each side of the axle. And the tabs here are going to sit on each side of the, those U bolts. We got one on the back side, and there'll be one on the front side there. Now we'll bring the lower portion of our lower clamp or our axle strap around the bottom. We'll bring that up on our U bolts. We we'll place on our flat washer. Then we got a 3 8 lock nut to thread on there. Be a nylon lock nut just till it stops for now, it's fine. Same thing on the front washer and lock nut. Let that hang. Now we can take care of our U bolt for our spring pack. The larger U bolt we have. We need to bring that around the back side here. So usually it's best just to bring it down from the top. Kind of roll it as you drop it. And then bring that through just like that. Also on both sides of that, flat washer and nylon lock nut. Now that we've got all of our hardware started on our lower bracket, we'll tighten these up so they make contact with our axle and do this evenly. Now we'll get both of these torqued to the specifications in our instructions. And we'll move on to the U-bolt around our spring pack. Now we're going to get those torqued down as well. Again, refer to your instructions for the specification. Now we'll head over to the passenger side and repeat that same process. Now you're going to need to raise your axle back up. You can either lower the frame, you can raise the axle, whatever your situation, however, it's going to be easier for you. But we need to close the gap between the lower portion of our upper bracket and the upper portion. Now, once you have a minimal gap there, you can take your shorter carriage bolts. These drop down through the top bracket into the lower top bracket. Then we need to put on a flat washer and a lock nut. Now we're going to do this both sides in this spot but also both sides in the forward location as well, which would be right up here. Now I'm going to just take the slack out of my bolt. I still want a little bit of movement in that upper plate. A little too much. There, see we're pretty close. What we're going to do now, we just want to adjust our airbag. We can move it forward and back a little bit. You can kind of see here. See how those two plates are designed to slide. We want to get this as upright as possible. Looks like in our case, we're going to bring it towards the rear a little bit, snug down one of our nuts here to keep hold that position. And we'll snug down the one in the front and we'll torque them to the specifications and the instructions. Now we'll do that for the passenger side as well. Now we're going to take our heat shield and you can see the two tabs. These are typically flat. You just want to bend them up and then bend them over at an angle. This is going to allow us to get our hose clamps underneath. Now this truck has a six inch exhaust system so the hose clamps that come with the kit they're just not going to be long enough. What we've done is combined an additional four inch clamp with those. For your standard exhaust the one that comes with it should be fine. In this case giant exhaust we need to add some length of the hose clamp. You can choose to get one longer one or add two shorter ones, whatever your preference. We just want to bring that up in position. Again, with this larger exhaust, we need to make a few modifications. We can kind of flex this around to where it'll kind of contour with it. Do whatever you need to do in your application. Just get some protection there so when this heats up, it doesn't cause any damage to our airbag. Once you've got it kind of bent the way you want it, just bring your clamp around the exhaust and get it started. Take most of the slack out. Using a 5 16th bit driver or socket. And we want our clamp to slide right up onto that tab. That's what's going to hold it. If 
you have a little bit of excess like we've got here, you just want to trim that off. You can use 10 snips, you can use aviation shears or just a cutoff wheel. Now we're going to decide on the location we want to mount our air fittings. We're going to go right up in this area. This is going to give us a nice convenient location to mount it to. Now typically in a standard application if you have the step bumper, you can go right beside your license plate kind of here and here. I like to sometimes replace the license plate screws and bring our air fittings right through there. Kind of gives it more of a custom look. And it kind of could be up to you and where you want them to be mounted. I'm just going to mark my locations here. Of course we need to leave a little bit of space between them. So I'm just going to put one right there and one right there. Now we're going to use a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill both of those holes out. Now we're going to take one of the ends of our airline. We're going to thread on one of the nuts. We want to place a serrated washer on there. We'll bring it through our hole. Once it's through, we need to add on our rubber washer. We've got another flat washer to go on. And then we've got our nut. Thread it down on there. You want to certainly make sure you have enough thread sticking out so when you put your air fitting on there or when you put your air chuck on there that it can actually depress the valve. Looks like it's in fine shape. So I'm going to use a 13 millimeter. Just hand tight, it's really all you need them to be in there. Once you get a nice secure fit, we're going to go to that back side and start routing that line to the passenger airbag. I'm going to route my airlines back. Now this has a flatbed on it, so it's pretty much a direct shot. If you're using a regular pickup truck bed application, just route this so that it's not going across any sharp edges. You don't want it hit by any significant sources of heat. When we get by the exhaust here, I'll show you what they've provided to help out with that. We're just going to get it zip tied so it's out of the way. It won't move around too much. This rail is going to cause us to have to double up our zip ties. Now in my case here, going over this channel, I'm going to be using some longer zip ties. So it would be a good idea to have a few of those on hand. Trim off our excess there. Now I'm going to create a small loop here, just so if we ever need to make any changes or if we happen to have a leak or something like that, we'll have some extra airline to work with. Let's bring it down, determine how much we're going to need. We want to use a nice quality pair of hose cutters. We've just got a little heavier duty set here. The key is just to make a really nice flush cut. Now that protective cover that's provided, we want to use that right by our exhaust. So we're going to slide that over. We're going to slide that into our elbow fitting. Now we want to slide their airline tubing in. We're going to feel a stop. And then we need to slide just a little bit further, push it really well, make sure it's seated in there all the way, and then you should be able to pull on it without it coming back out. Adjust our protective cover there, and then secure it anywhere you might need securing. Now we're going to take the portion of airline that we cut off. It's going to have the same style valve on it there. It's going to go in our other hole. We'll follow the same procedure for running it over to the driver's side. Just not have to deal with that protective sleeve since we don't have any exhaust there. Now once you have your truck sitting back on the tires, everything's on the ground, we want to check this area right here. We've got a vent tube that comes out of the axle. You can see that roll plate's just barely making contact with it. So what we want to do is flex that plate away from that. And use pliers, you can use a hammer if you want to persuade it a little bit. See, we just rolled that edge in just a little bit to give us the clearance we need so we don't have any contact. Now let's get some air in the airbags. We're going to go up to about 50 PSI. And we're going to spray down our connections or the top of our bag and our Schrader valves at the back to determine if we have any leaks or not. I'm just going to use a soap water solution here. And you really need to let it sit for a few minutes and just make sure you don't see any little bubbles forming. 
We're gonna check the back of the valves here just to make sure, and also the front. Now with no leaks detected, that's gonna complete our installation of the Airlift Load Lifter 7500XL Air Helper Springs. Part number AL57595 on our 2008 Ram 2500. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.